You started to tell us something last night about what do you call your little room again that you write My your angel room. Angel room. Mm -hmm. Tell that little story again, will you? How what happened when you moved into that house? And then I want to talk about some of the things that the Lord's been dropping into that angel room. Okay. Well, Paul, uh, uh, it's very hard to write for people <clears throat> like us and like Paul, the ministers, unless there's an atmosphere for us. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have the right atmosphere to write different kinds of music and different sermons. And, but I was praying. When we left California, I said, Lord, I haven't found a place that turns on the gift in me in a long time, like at the ranch in Tennessee, like it used to. We, uh, to make a long story short, went, and the Lord had chosen us a special home in Atlanta, and we looked three weeks on the last day we were going to give up and build a new house. And the little real estate lady said, let me show you one more. We got to the top of the hill. You haven't even heard this. We bought the house. We w walked inside. We toured it. Went up to the third floor. Walked into a little bitty room. Paul, it's really not that big. It's not that fabulous. But it will be to you when you walk into it. It was just sitting there empty. I walked in. The Holy Spirit just froze me all over. You know that good feeling where you freeze and you get hot at the same time? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I, I felt in my spirit, this is my room to write. I walked out and I said, Buck, could, could I have this for a meditation room? You can put me in a music room anywhere you want to, somewhere else, but I want this room. He said, any room you want, you can have it. We came back to California to get our furniture, and two little brothers of the church in Atlanta offered to drive our cars back. So prior to their getting on the airplane, they went to check out our empty house to make sure it was all right. This one gentleman that I love so much started through the door of this little room, and he heard giggling, and he heard like almost like a vibration on the floor and the carpet. He said, somebody's in the Rambo's house. He said, well, i got to check it out, Paul. So he just started on through the door. And when he got through the door, and I freeze every time I tell this story, when he got through the door of that room, seven feet gothic angels were in like a merry-go-round circle and they had silver trays and they were dancing like little children ignoring this young man Mike and one of them had a tray it had a music note on it another one had words lyrics another one a, ch a chart or music score musical instruments and they were just dancing and humming a song he said he'd never heard anything like it he and he angels. saw these angels but they just totally watch me freeze mm. holy ghost chill them mm. he said they just ignored him and all at once one of them like in a childlike spirit looked at another one Maud amen kind of danced and giggled and said Oh, I can't wait till she gets here and puts all this together so we'll know what it sounds like. <laughs> and you cannot, you cannot walk into this room. I never tell people that come to visit me about this room, especially people that do not profess Christ. I wait to see what they're going to do. My housekeeper's little four-year-old walked into the room the other day, and I was touring around. And I said, now, darling, you don't play in this room because, see, uh, Grand Dot Grace is what the kids call me. Grand Dot Grace <laughs> has guitars and amplifiers, and there's guns back here and everything. You don't play in here. And she looked at me and rubbed her little arm. She said, oh, oh, but Grand Dot, you don't understand. This is my most favorite room. And I said, why, darling? She said, because this room feels good. So out of that room has come, I guess, more songs, Paul, uh, for what earthly reason? Um, the artist reaching around the world, and I, he, you, never you never once stopped believing in me. Uh, there's a new song coming out of there now <laughs> that I quoted you the lyric to last That's night. What, what was it, that again? How does that go again? Oh, he sees me through the blood and claims me through the Lamb. He doesn't see my past. He just takes me as I am. He doesn't see a slave, a prisoner of the chains. He sees me through the blood. And he can only see a king. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. There's so, more coming, I know. Yeah, there's more coming. So the artist was also written in The artist, book. I could not birth that song, Paul. I couldn't birth it. But immediately when I walked into that room and I sat down on the floor with my bare feet, blue jeans, and old guitar, I felt the angels visiting me again. I never walk into the room 
of what I don't laugh and cry both at the same time. Mm. I put my sewing machine up in there and, and sew for therapy because I want to be in the presence of that room. And the Lord has sent many letters of prophecy as what would come out of the room. And it's like a well that never stops springing up. And everybody that comes there that desires the gift of some kind of work in them, I'll say, come and go with me to this special room, and we're going to anoint you in Jesus' name. And because I believe that's where the Lord in my home is going to be. Would the heavenly Father send down His Son to suffer rejection and pay for crimes He had not done? For what earthly reason would the Father let Him hang on the tree? I wept with that one earthly reason was me.
It was shaped in the image of me. The shadows were deep and with sorrow. The brow was wrinkled with pain. The eyes were sad and so empty. A of sorrow and shame. He painted a heart that was broken, torn and scarred deep within. Bitter from life. The blackness of sin. I looked in the eyes of the artist. I trembled and reached for his hand. And cry, oh master creator, transform me and paint me again. So he smiled and lifted the canvas and started. And he painted Reaching round the world, reaching round the world. 
We are a torch lifted high, flaming bright, shining round the world, shining round the world. Again, he never wants. 
stop believing in me. He never wants stop believing in me. Precious flow 